it's it's like having a bomb in your head and you don't know if it's going to go off. Wow. Um, I lived it like when I got the confirmation that I had it from that day until the day I had my surgery, I, I was terrified that it was just going to go. Go, that, yeah. you know, I'd be at work or I'd be on the subway or I'd be out and I would just die. Stephanie Ann, author of The Experiment. Thank you so much for coming on and joining me the Uniweb interview show. I'm your host, Matthew Whiteside. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure. I'm excited to talk to you about your book, The Experiment. Um, now, when did this this book just, did you just recently publish this book or has it been out for a little while? I finished writing and editing and all that fun stuff that you get to do after uh, you complete your story um, back at the end of October of last year. Oh, wow. And by the first couple of weeks of November, I had gone through this self-publishing route and had it available for, for everybody. So it's been a few, couple months. Now, you self-published, it's not through um, KDP, is that correct? You self-published no. through a different source. Yes, I self-published through Lulu. Um, Lulu. Okay. They, uh, I had done a bunch of uh, stuff with them years ago, and mm -hmm. I found them for myself, anyways, the most user-friendly to okay. to go through um, everything I could that I needed uh, to self-publish the book. I found on their site, so they had cover art that I could use, so I didn't have to worry about finding somebody to design a cover or design one myself. Um, the uploading of the files was extremely easy, and even with one of the um, one of my works that I did years ago, they converted it to EPUB for me for free at, at the time because they had just started doing that conversion. So yeah. I just stuck with them. I, I knew how to use them, so I just stuck with them. Now, with it, it was the because um, I know a lot of a lot of people who use KDP talk about the formatting of the document. Was there any formatting issues that you had you ran into, or did did they use a certain um, formatting um, software, or was it all stuff you did on your own? They had templates, word te word uh, word templates that you could download to and it matched the size of the of the book that you wanted to produce. And the only thing that I had to do was copy and paste into the Word document that I downloaded from their website and then make sure the spacing was, was good. So, you know, end of chapters yeah. and things like that. But the margins, everything was already taken care of. So I didn't wow. have to worry about that. That sounds really simple. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I need that. I'm not, I'm not the the most technical savvy person out there believe me even for i think i'm a pretty quick learner when it comes to technology but like even for me like it was it's something that still like drives me insane i know a working knowledge of it but it still takes so much like mm -hmm. time and effort to format properly um yeah. so it's called lulu.com your book is available yes. on lulu.com yes. okay the experiment yes. so tell us let's 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 talk about it the experiment Yes. What is this a scientific project? What is the hypothesis? What are we doing here? What's the experiment about? Um, every time I try and describe it, I, uh, I, I, I get <laughs> myself do do <laughs> I'm like, no, um, I'm trying to find my synod like my, my query right here to, to get it, but I can't find it. Um, basically, it's about a group of five young people, uh, late teens, early 20s, who discover that they can do some extraordinary things. When they okay. look into uh, what happened to them, they realize that their parents were part of a, a, a human experiment before they were born. Um, and then when they start following the thread that's unraveling around them, they find out that 
the experiment that their parents were in was just the tip of the iceberg um, to what the company in charge of it is actually doing to everybody. So this is that's that's pretty neat. So the the parents were like genetically altered in some in some form. Do you do you talk about that or, or is that what happened? I have no clue. <laughs> I haven't read it. Um, I, uh, I I I'm really trying not to spoil anything, and I, and I know this story so Good. intimately. I I don't know what what would be a spoiler for somebody else. Um, there the the parents experiment actually turned out to be a, a failure. Um, it, what they were trying to accomplish didn't happen, but oh. the things that were changed in them were passed on to their kids. Mm, the genes. And so instead of, um, following through with the participants in the first place to see, you know, what would happen to them down the road, they deemed it a, a failure and never looked into their their futures to see oh they had kids or you know what's going on with them and so that's kind of what happened in that part so where does where did the idea come from for this corporation experimenting on these people to alter them in some way where was the where was the idea originate from for you um i I cannot remember for the life of me when I had the idea like, oh, this is what I want to do. I, ha- I know bits and pieces. Uh-huh. Uh, I remember I remember the first concept of this was going to be a graphic novel. A friend okay. of mine had wanted to do the uh, design and, and the illustrations for me. I didn't realize that he didn't know how to <laughs> at first. <laughs> <laughs> Um, artist, huh? which no I think he was an artist but he just he wanted to do it digitally oh, and okay. he hadn't figured out how to do that yet and so I asked him I go do you mind if I just go ahead and write the story out because it was starting to really come together in my head he's like yeah sure no problem and um, I just went ahead and started getting it down it has changed quite a lot um from when i first uh, came up with the idea but i'm going back over some of my notes and then reading what i've written now it's i'm i'm glad it turned out the way it did yeah the so so this the story uh, following these five kids um they're in the young adult range, so like from yes. like twenty one to eighteen kind of area. Um, my youngest character is nineteen. Uh, okay. She's my main character, and my oldest character. Um, I'm even unsure of how old he, <laughs> how old he is. Um, probably, I would say uh, mid thirties. Okay, would be the like. Out of the ones that we follow throughout, I mean, but obviously his, there's well, his age and just never kids, comes but, up, or um, it's, never really... it, it, it's never really mentioned. Um, mm-hmm. We know that in the the part of the book where this character is um, introduced, we know that he's the oldest out of that group. Okay, um, and there's I believe i have like oh you know there's a eight-year age difference or a seven-year age difference something like that but i never get into the exact ages um i just i prefer the 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 reader to just imagine who they want in in, in that role so to me the ages as long as you have a rough idea it's not that important to me Right. Yeah, it's more about connecting character traits, right? Like what you see in the what yes. you see in the character. Um, so, can we talk about what kind of power do we do we get to find out what kind of powers they have, like what their abilities yes. are in this, in this book? Yes. 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 Um, that's not a spoiler. <laughs> so, okay. 
So we have Siren. She's our 19-year-old, um, the half Japanese, half Australian character. She okay. has the um, ability to read and manipulate energy. So she can't read mine. She doesn't know what's going to happen in the future, but she knows what's already happened. In my canon, um, everything a person does creates an energy. Right. So whether you're having a conversation with someone or you're walking down the street, that all creates an energy and she can read that. So she can know what somebody has said in the, you know, prior to their actions at the moment. Wow. Um, so she knows that she can tell a person's entire history pretty much. Is, yes. is there like a limit to how far back she can go or? Well, she's just learning. Okay. She's just figuring out that she can do it. Um, she's struggling a little bit with what she can do because it's very overwhelming for her. And um, you see her journey from figuring out what she can do in the beginning and where she ends at the end with the ability to control and be comfortable with her ability. Can imagine she would be a little bit freaked out, like coming up to a stranger and seeing some crap they've done in the past, and being like, w "Like, does she see it as a vision, or is it?" She has to pick up on it. Like, it doesn't just come to her. Um, okay. She is overwhelmed in large crowds by all the energy that's coming at her. Um, mm -hmm. But to sit. And pick, she would have to sit and focus on someone and then follow the threads back uh, to okay. what, what they've done in the past. I got you. Oh, sorry, I gotta get comfortable. That's okay. Same, what was her name? Siren. Siren. Yeah. Okay, so Siren's got the ability to, to read energies. So who, yes. who else are we following in this story? Uh, her best friend is Axe. He okay. is um, a he lives in um, Japan with Siren um, after his parents uh, passed away. Long story. Anyways, he is, um, he can shapeshift into anybody, anybody that he, he wants. He can look at a picture of somebody and suddenly turn into them down to, down to the fingerprint. Oh, wow. Voice and everything. He he doesn't yes. sound like himself anymore. Very no, cool. no. And then we have Miguel, who okay. um, he uh, I did. I, I can't even pronounce the word. The word. Um, it's okay. Idetic. So he he can remember everything that's ever been told to him that he's ever read that he's ever did. He remembers everything. Like but that. at the same time, he can read something and know how to how to do it. Okay. So, so he, he absorbs information himself, and he's able to practice it. He can teach himself how to fly a plane just by going through the the you know the instructions once kind of thing. If he can remember everything, though, he's got to have some mental torment going on. <laughs> of some sort i feel like <laughs> if there's it's nice to not it's nice to be able to forget some things it, it, it trust me it's very nice to be able to forget some things i have firsthand <laughs> knowledge of that but right. um that's it's it's not something that he is too worried about himself right. um his character i want to say is going to be the one who has realized um, that he's been different for the longest amount of time. So he's, it's, it's part of him. He's not freaking out or, oh my God, what's going on? This is part of him and he's able to um, hide it fairly well from everybody around him. All right. Well, yeah, I guess if he's had a great memory since, he has a great memory, I guess he would remember him being able to remember <laughs> that, yeah then you get into the loop i remembered yeah. that i remember that i remember and then his head explodes explodes yeah oh my god ah. infinite loop <laughs> going of remembering remembering okay that's um, miguel yeah. right, is this all set have... in japan 
Um, no, uh, Siren and Axe are in Japan. Um, mm-hmm. Miguel is in London, okay. and um, the twins, uh, Julian and Violet, are also in London. But the story takes us from Japan to London to Australia um, and some other places that I can't divulge. Mystery. Because that would be giving up way too much. I got you. I know you can't divulge too much. You gotta no. leave something for the reader. Exactly, exactly. Um, so then we have the twins, um, uh-huh. Julian and Violet. And okay. um, Julian can uh, manipulate elements. Every element on that periodic table, he can mess around with it, uh, including the earth, the um, metal, weather, all that Boron. kind of stuff. Par- pardon? Boron? Possibly. I'm not familiar. It's, a, it's an element. <laughs> <laughs> then yes. <laughs> Um, okay, good. I, I did a little bit of, of research on that. I, I bought myself a book of elements and I was like, okay, what can I do with this? Um, yeah. I don't have the science background or, or anything like that. This is all just stuff that pops yeah. into my head. Um, and then Violet is, um, it's hard to describe her. Um, I, I make a joke that she can shoot lasers from her eyes. <laughs> she can't. No. <laughs> um, well, she must have a pretty mean stare. She does. She does. Um, she blows up a television at one point by accident. Um, she, her, her, her abilities are a little bit more on the tricky side. Um, and now that I think about it, I'm not sure if I flesh them out too well. Oops. But um, don't she, worry, I'll cut that uh, out. You did okay. a great job with that. <laughs> oh, awesome! Thanks. Um, she she can see in different waves, so ultraviolet waves, like all the different spectrums that how how we see our color and and things, and then the things that we can't see, she can see those things. So okay. um, different chemicals. Like microwaves, in, radio waves. Like, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, it's like being able to see in different dimensions. Almost. Yeah. But she can also um, heal things. Okay. So she can... Um, mm, I... Ooh... I'm trying to decide if this is too much information. Let me ask you, is it like she's able to use like um, chi energy to like Mr. Miyagi style? <laughs> Not, what, but it, like what, in, a, in a more magical way. <laughs> yes, no, I, 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 I get the reference. I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, she, can, she can help the, the earth heal. Not... Mm-hmm. People, I, I didn't get into into that, okay. um, but she can help um, regenerate things and bring life to where there was no life before. The, the, the world that they live in, which is extremely close in similarities to, to ours, um, right. has basically... What, what we see right now in with the climate change and things like that, animals going extinct and plants. Yeah. I think there was an article a few weeks ago that, you know, there's a threat to the coffee supply, um, mm-hmm. which yeah. people are getting very, very upset about. Um, <laughs> this is the, the world that they live in is what happens if nothing is done about it. Ah. So... In, in Siren's world, a cup of coffee costs, a, you know, half a year's pay or, or a week's pay just for wow. a tiny little cup of coffee. Um, there's ration lists and um, people have to wear masks because, you know, everybody has some form of sickness. Um, 
diseases have skyrocketed and mutated to the point where they can't do anything about it. If you um, get a form of cancer, it's practically terminal because it's changed so much that there's nothing the medical field can do about it. Wow. Um, so they're kind of close to the the end of their world. Wow. So this is almost like a, an ap- apocalyptic type almost. setting. Almost. Almost. Kind of. It does. It, 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 it is and it isn't. That's all I'll say about that. It's, <laughs> do you do you talk about the actual time frame that it's set in? Like the do you give hints with like the the era? Little hints. That there's, Little hints. Yeah. Um, I make reference to um, one of the the climate. Um, oh, when they got when they all got together. I'm sorry, I just can't figure out the word for a second. Um, they make reference to the um, climate talks of from a few years ago. Okay. And how, um, they say, you know, look, we only have a certain amount of time. If we don't start doing things and doing some drastic things in the next couple of years, we're going to go past the tipping point and there's going to be nothing we can do to reverse right. what's going on. Well, they didn't do anything and they've gone over the tipping point. The tipping point has been reached. Yes. It's kind of, that can be scary. So is this, um, with the five characters, the story, the diff, the diff, I can imagine just the different storylines. Um, is this something you're planning for a series or was this just a standalone? This is a standalone. Okay. Um, when I was finished, I waited a little while and I was thinking, oh, you know, what else could, could happen? And it just wasn't coming naturally the ideas for a a sequel or, you know, what happens to them next. It just wasn't coming to me and I didn't want to force myself to come up with stuff just to make a sequel for it. It may later on down the road hit me what, Oh, Hey, what if this happened to them? But if I, if I didn't have a, an ending in my mind where I can logically get to, um, I can't, I, I, it's like writing a book to nowhere. Yeah. If I don't have a logical ending or conclusion for it, even if it's a little open ended, um, no ending, no story for me, anyways. I was gonna, yeah. So with that, so you you pretty much you plot out your entire story before you start writing, or is it just you want to at least have an ending in mind? I want to have an ending in mind. I'm I'm kind of half plot, half not plot yeah um pants i'll get ideas answer they call yes i'm a planter planter or a yeah half planner half pantser that's right <laughs> you nailed it but like i mean sometimes the ending can change because yeah. i i don't know about anybody else but for me sometimes the the book takes on a life of its own and i end up going somewhere where i didn't realize that I was heading to. And obviously the, the ending would have to change or be modified a little bit for that. But um, sometimes I'll start writing and I'll have an ending in mind. And then all these other things, oh, but then you can put in this and that would link to this and, and, and make this seem really, really great. And I'm like, oh, yay, yay, yay. Um, so I kind of have a rough idea of what's going on. And then I just let the the story take me to where it's where it's supposed to be going very cool yeah it's the beauty of writing you can uh especially when you have uh characters that you feel really in touch with and in tune mm-hmm. with they can kind of start telling their own story oh yeah yeah that's always a nice feeling i know with my last book it was i, I didn't have an ending in, in mind at all and i wrote the ending like three or four different times and it didn't feel right until finally i and I thought it was going to be a series until the the ending that I did write, the only one that felt right, was like, there's no series. Yep. <laughs> and I was oh, like, yeah. <laughs> damn, there goes my book right. deal. Yeah, there goes the multi-book deal, man. Also, and I've had people who haven't finished the book, they're like, 
this could be a cool series. And I'm like, wait till the end. (laughs) (laughs) It's so heartbreaking. It's okay. That's cool. So let's talk about your writing too. So are you working on another project now that uh, the experiment's finished? Yes, actually. Um, I came up with an idea for a, um, fantasy series for younger kids um young teenagers you know tween 10 10 and up yeah i guess um this one i'm about almost halfway done with the first draft getting okay. it getting all the ideas down on paper um i didn't think that I was going to get another idea for a while. Um, I, when we were talking earlier um, with my with my surgery, yeah. and, um, I I wasn't motivated to write after my surgery. So let's tell people kind of what happened yes. there, because yes. so you you have um, been. You okay, finished the so book, the, and then... Well, no, actually. Um, this happened before you got it published? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we got it. We got to go back to the beginning. So really, yeah. really quick. I went into the into the doctor. I had a pulse in my ear. I it, Boom, 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 boom. Didn't know what it was. Oh, it might be this. Turns out it wasn't. They said they didn't see any problem, but they found um, an unrelated tumor. Uh, in my in my face okay great get the tumor removed we find out it's not cancer the unfortunate problem was um, it was growing on my facial nerve so I have some permanent paralysis on the right side of my face I can't blink and stuff because of the kind of tumor it was being very aggressive growing tumor and they weren't able to get every single piece of it out. We opted to have radiation treatment for six weeks, um, a year ago. And during my prep for that, they found a brain aneurysm. I was operated on in August of 2018 and during my operation, the aneurysm um, ruptured near the end, causing a brain bleed. And yeah. the results of that is I have a slight brain injury that where I um, don't remember a lot of things sometimes. I have trouble um, expressing myself verbally, yeah. forget words, a little bit of weakness on the right side they 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 say it's kind of like having um a small stroke of of what i went through um but throughout the whole process i had some amazing and fantastic doctors and nurses and caregivers and i mean i still go and visit um my radiation techs because they yeah. just, they were, Annette and Jessica were just fantastic yeah. with their care. They just. It, it's got to uh, be like one of the I, scariest I, things you have to go through, right? I mean, it's it's got to be a terrifying kind of life-altering um, yeah. experience. Today, um, Amelia Clark came out from um, Game of Thrones. She actually suffered um, two brain aneurysms during her um, time on Game of Thrones. She had to have surgery. Um, her She got to the point where she said she couldn't remember her name. Wow. I thought aneurysm, uh, I thought an aneurysm, you would like, it would like incapacitate you or something, but there's... You, you don't normally survive aneurysms if they if they rupture. I have two relatives who passed away from them. Oh. Um, mm. It's there's not a lot of research from what the doctors tell me, and yeah. um, it 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 is scary because. Knowing about it beforehand, and especially knowing that I had a couple of relatives that um, died because of it, it's it's like having a bomb 
in your head and you don't know if it's going to go off. Um, I lived in like when I got the confirmation that I had it from that day until the day I had my surgery, I, I was terrified that it was just going to go. Yeah. I'd get work or I'd be on the subway or I'd be out and I would just die. Wow. That's terrifying. What did you, how did, I mean, did it change the way you did things during that time? I mean, obviously you're, you're terrified, but like, did you notice that you lived differently? I mean, were you doing anything differently during that time when you had that idea that it was going to happen or it could happen? I I was under a lot. I I, I felt a lot of stress. I I didn't enjoy things at the time. Um, I didn't know if I exerted myself, if I walked up the stairs and, you know, caused my heart rate to, to go up a little bit, was that going to set it off? Um, it was more try not to do anything to trigger it, but at the same time, I, I don't know what's going to trigger it. Yeah. So I tried to keep myself busy. Um, I I prepared for my death. Um, oh my gosh! I I you know did my will and got all my paperwork together and you know made sure that the people knew what was what my wishes were ahead of time just in case because it's I didn't want to leave anybody with worries or any more stress or or anything like that. I just wanted to try and make things as easy as possible. (laughs) It's, (laughs) um, I can laugh about it now, but it was, it it, it was, it was a really scary time, but, um, the, the saving graces, I don't really remember now. So, (laughs) Hey, (laughs) it's a bonus. And, and, uh, or something. That'd be, no, it's you know what I'm. I'm very lucky, um, especially how it, considering. How do you, how do you, did it change? I mean, it, did it change the way you view life now, though? I mean, are you? Yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. Um, well, with the with the whole memory thing, like I said, I don't remember stuff, so I don't stay mad very long, which is great. Yeah. Um. Unfortunately, there are conversations and people that I meet that I don't remember. Um, Mm -hmm. I went to one of my rehab appointments yesterday and I had to ask the doctor who came to get me. I'm like, did we meet before? She's like, yeah, last week. I'm like, okay. Um, (laughs) But I guess I'm, 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 I'm very lucky. I'm still alive. Things, for the most part, still work the way they used to work before. Um, I'm not as stressed or angry as I was. Um, If I don't know something, I don't know it. And, you know, if somebody else is going to get upset about it, I can't do anything about that. So have fun. Um, but if I still have a long road to recovery, um, Uh they say that it can take up to two years for a brain injury to heal if, if, if it does. So I still have another year and a half to, you know, get through and I have my ups and downs, you know, I get headaches and, and sometimes because my brain chemistry is, is wonky, um, you know, days where I just, don't want to do anything and just want to stay in bed all day, um, which I know a lot of people can relate to. But for the most part, um, I'm a lot happier now. Um, yeah. I appreciate things more. And I have firsthand knowledge that it can end at any time. Yeah. So I don't want to. I want to try not to waste as much time as I used to with, with doing things. Well, I guess with that too, you realize that, 
even after the scare and after having that that happen it still can like life can end at any moment yeah and how pre- how precious it is right and, like how we have this amazing opportunity to live mm-hmm. you know either a beautiful life or a miserable one and it yeah. can be difficult it can be difficult to choose the beautiful fun like happy life because we like to hold on to things yep but it takes work it does take work and that's you, I mean, that's a huge testament to to you that you're obviously doing some kind of work to you know because having a, a brain injury like that and then still coming coming out of it and doing the work necessary you're in rehab now for for the brain injury but you're yeah. you're also doing some other things correct or for yes. your for your own mental health and yes yeah. um so going back to um when I when I published, I was saying that I wasn't motivated to to write um, after I got out of the hospital, mm-hmm. and I was so close to finishing my book. Um, I had the notes ready. I knew what needed to be changed. Um, all I needed to do was go in and fix those last few things. It was less than a day's worth of work, and yeah. I just couldn't couldn't find the motivation to even just finish those few little things. Yeah. And um, at work one day, I have uh, a, a woman who is becoming a very good friend. Um, she's like, you write? I'm like, yeah. I didn't know you wrote. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm not, you know not one to go around and tell everybody, but yeah, I do. I'm almost finished my book. She goes, well, when you're finished your book, you let me know. I want to do, I want to do your audio book. She had done the classes. She had a studio, you know, she wow. was looking to get more um, things on her resume um, uh-huh. to start to, I guess, change careers. And right. I was like, okay. And I went home that weekend and I finished my book from just that conversation that I had with her. She has been, um, she lit something like she lit a spark somewhere that has gotten me to, to do this. Um, you know, at her suggestion, I, I started the Twitter account, um, Wow. You know, and after a couple months, I have over 2,000 followers. Like, that's insane. I don't even yeah. know 2,000 people, but that's insane. And <laughs> hello to every one of my followers. I think you guys are awesome. Um, you know, Instagram and all this other kind of stuff. Um, and through work and through her and, and the department that she works in, I also have started volunteering um, we did a reading with kids at one of the schools, um, uh-huh. near, near our office and we were able to give them a whole bunch of, uh, they were grade two students. They were hilarious. Yeah. Um, you know, give them free nice. books. And then I've started speaking to the gentleman who runs the organization that gives the free books. And we're going to be talking about, um, donating my book to them to give to high school students um all kids who really can't afford to go out and spend their money on books um i don't care about i I mean obviously yeah i'd love to have enough money where i don't have to work anymore i can write full time but yeah i just i want people to read i want people to be entertained by my book and you know just, just read it. I, I don't care how you get it. Don't steal it. But you know, I, <laughs> I had a conversation you know, I, about stealing books last night with some people. Yeah, I mean, it's it, if the author's going to give it to you for free, great. Don't steal it from someone else, or don't steal it from the store. But I mean, obviously, you can't stop somebody from giving. I read the book here. You read the book and passing yeah. the book around. But you know, just don't like go online and steal it from someone that's not cool not cool at all no (laughs) no 
But it is a sign that people want what you have if they're stealing it. It means you put it. <laughs> it means it's good. Okay, well, look. They gotta get that, their, they gotta get their hands on it, however possible. Yeah, sure. Okay, we'll go with that. But don't do it. <laughs> no, don't do it. Stealing's not cool, kids. Yeah, you want to be cool. Yes. <laughs> so, you, so you are writing something else right now. Yes. So, yes, I um, I got an idea for a, a, a fantasy series for younger kids, and. I mean, it could all end up all being in one book. It could end up being five books. I have no idea. We'll just see how where it takes me. But I'm about halfway through now uh, writing my first draft uh-huh. of um, the yet-to-be-titled. I mean, I'm horrible at naming things. Um, <laughs> but Can you give it, us a synopsis about what it's about? Well, it starts off with um, my character, Aishi. Um, uh-huh. She... Uh, like her, like her creator has uh, had brain surgery and um, has a couple of uh, small disabilities about her that makes it a little bit hard for her to um, walk, uh, remember things like that. And yeah. she is tasked with saving the realms. Um, so we have, we're going to have about five different worlds where, um, yeah, see, I'm not sure where I'm going exactly with this, but so basically uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, everybody lived in harmony together um, on earth, all the creatures, all the humans, every being and then fighting started so the yeah. groups all got together and decided hey you know what in order to keep everybody safe and in order to stop the fighting because we're going to get wiped out let's separate everybody so they used their magic to build walls between the different groups species however you want to call it and left yeah. the humans by themselves because basically they were the root of all the problems. <laughs> yeah. Go figure. Makes sense. Um, a bunch of, bunch of maniacs. Yeah. Is the yeah. is the number five special to you for some reason? N- no. But I do like odd numbers. Odd numbers okay. are my thing. Like three and seven and yeah. I I don't know why it's just one of those. I was just curious because of the five kids and then five five realms, right? Yeah, it's it's probably just one of those familiar comfort things. Yeah, you know, I've used five in the past. Might as well use you know five sounds like a good good number of books for a series. Yeah, I was just curious because I use like I use the orphan thing a lot like uh, most of my characters are either only children or they're orphaned because <laughs> who doesn't I like who twins. doesn't love an orphan you what everybody loves an orphan i got i got this thing about twins there you go so many stories with twins in them yeah it's, i think it's, it's just for some reason we we connect well with it right and it connects i don't know i'm an only child i okay. maybe I've, I've always wanted a twin i don't know i'm one of five and I've, I've always, <laughs> so I was always like, being the only one. Yeah, always, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was the orphan. <laughs> Where are the, <laughs> why are the rest of you here? You're like you're 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 interfering. They were stealing with my, my shine. Yeah, they were they yes. were taking my shine. So we got, you're not the middle one, are you? No, I'm number four. Oh, okay. Which so far enough down where it was like, yeah, do whatever you want. Oh yeah, I was. He got away with everything. Le- I was left by myself all the time. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was, I was, I was pretty much just Mister Mister on his own. Uh oh. It's a good time. Yeah. It's why I'm so well adjusted. Yes, I can see that. That's why I love talking to other people too, because <laughs> I'm so lonely. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, I can go days without talking to someone if they let me. Really? Yeah. 
yeah, some days I'm just like, okay, just leave me alone. I, I like that's the perfect the structure company. for being a writer. Yeah, it's exactly what because the I mean, it's that's the thing, right? It can be such a, a lonely task too if we let it, but it's fun. Like with that, uh, the lady who said that she wanted to do your auto, auto audio book. Like that one thing got you back in. Like yeah. people can be such inspirations for us, and it, it speaks also to like living your life with more meaning now. Like we mm-hmm. never know who we smile at or who we share a good word with. If that's going to do something in their day that changes the course of their life, like yep. you, giving you the motivation to write your book, you know, it's just it reminds us that we should you know walk a little bit gently, more gentle, and uh, speak to people with more care. Than yep. anything else, you know. Yeah, it's hard to do, but you know, because we're all idiots. Just try. <laughs> That's yeah. <why> it's hard. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know what? Like on an individual basis, we're all we're all great as a as a species. Right. We're stupid. As, yeah. Yeah, as a collective group. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's but the no, men, I black, could... men in black quote. It was like people are smart. A group of people are stupid. Oh yeah. Um. I had put, I even acknowledged, like in in my book, I I put in a, a thank you to her for oh. um, getting me, getting get, <clears throat> excuse me, getting me going. And even now, she still, um, you know, she was telling me, oh, uh, at Christmas we were talking about your book. I'm like, okay. <laughs> that's so weird but yeah. um, and then she was talking she has a friend who um produces and she started asking her questions like okay so we think this this book would be a really great netflix series so how would she go about doing it i'm like i wasn't even there yeah like she's just I, like she's like come on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> i i think it's just so amazing that she would she would think to ask these questions to to somebody about me um to to help me i i just i'm blown away by by just her support and and stuff and then i tell i say you know you motivate me she's like no you motivate me and now i'm doing this and now i'm doing this and i'm like i didn't do anything like i i i don't feel like i did anything but yeah i'm i'm happy i'm happy that she's you know doing all this other stuff as well so i guess i'll just keep doing what i'm doing that's it it's such a beautiful testimony to to that doing what you what you're doing because a lot of us are just sitting around doing nothing i do a lot of that too so i you know anybody anybody who who sits and, and and sees this or or reads or or whatever i'm not you know my my days aren't jam-packed i'm not sitting here you know writing in in every second of my spare time and and i have lots of lazy moments where i do absolutely nothing but you know it's in the back of my mind hey you know you're writing this part of, of your story you know, and something will work out as I'm watching TV or, um, you know, to help my brain, I, I do do some word games and stuff to get yeah. my brain, you know, I think that's started all, a little bit. I think that's all part of having a healthy brain balance, too. It's like yeah. if, if I'm constantly pushing my mind in one direction, then it's going to be out of balance at some sort. Mm-hmm. Like I have to allow it to rest and relax and like unwind too i mean i I can't i can't force it into action all the time it's necessary to have balance especially especially coming back from a brain injury like i I share with you i've had multiple concussions and Mm -hmm. i always thought i had to immediately get right back in the weight room get right back to football like right back in the thing and it was like pushing myself like that probably caused me more head injuries than if I would have given myself time to balance back out to normal and be healthy. And it probably yeah. affected me poorly in the long run, you know, like, <laughs> which yeah, I'm but, pretty sure it did. But Well, maybe, maybe, 
maybe you needed to go through what you went through to appreciate and know what to do now. I mean, it's yeah. that, of course, well, it's easy that, to say, too. but, um, no, I do you know, everybody, that. I, I get a lot of people tell me, oh, you know, there's plans for you, you know, somebody didn't want you to, to die at that time. There's, you know, stuff that somebody's keeping you around for, whether it's God or fate or, or whatever you believe in. Um, I just figure, you know what, let's just go with the flow. Let's just yeah. see what happens next. Um, the more for myself that I push for something, the more, the, the further away it, it gets. So if something is supposed to happen for me, and I still do the work and, and stuff. Um, yeah. I don't expect to get an agent unless I query. Right. Right. Th things They're like that. Like, it's not just going to happen. Somebody's not going to magically get a copy of my book to some agent that they know. And the agent's going to be like, oh, my God, I need to sign this. Like, it doesn't happen like that, like in yeah. the movies and stuff. Um, I know I have to do the work for this. Yeah. But I also listen to myself and my body and, and, and it's like, okay, you need to rest now or you need to do something else or I get, um, I get these urges when I have to write, when I get an idea and mm -hmm. it's, it's, I call it a good anxiety where I don't feel right until I get the scene or the idea or whatever it is that's in my head on paper. Yeah. Um, and I forget where I was going with this. No, it's, it's doing the work. It's doing the yeah. thing. Like you can, yeah, obviously you live a more gentle, peaceful, go with the flow kind of life, but it doesn't mean you just sit back and wait for things yeah. to come to you. You're still intentionally doing the things you know are good for you. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm finding, I'm finding a balance between, you know, work, work that I have to do to get paid work that I want to do to eventually get paid, yeah. um, work at home, family, friends, rest, diet, exercise, all that kind of stuff. I'm finding, like finding the, finding the balance. I mean, I, I, I liken my life to every day I can learn something every day. I can try and be a little bit better. Um, yeah. it's not going to happen overnight, but if I make a conscious effort to, you know, smile to that person on the street or, or do something little, those little things will eventually get bigger yeah. and the negative stuff that I do, like get ticked off at people pushing on the subway, um, that's not going to happen as much. And me mouthing off at them won't happen as much either. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Very true. Well, Stephanie, I want to thank you so much for coming on. It's been uh, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. Um, such an inspirational story and your real life story. And the experiment sounds like such a cool idea that I, I want to dig into and, and, and check out. Um Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. This was a lot of fun, and I hope uh, I hope people watching this are. Uh, I hope they buy my book. No, I don't expect. I hope anything, they do but, too. I'm gonna. Well, it, I'm gonna it would be links. great. It would. It would be amazing. I'm not. I would be if very. They don't grateful. buy your book. You <laughs> will find them and murder them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, like I, I didn't say that that those words never came out of my mouth. And if they did, it's because he edited them and to, to, to make me say them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I have the editing powers. Exactly. <laughs> uh, awesome. No, I'm going to put links. I'm going to put links in the description of the video to, um, to your website, to lulu.com, to where they can buy your book. There is uh, a link on my website. 
directly okay. to my page. And that does that also link you to your social media and stuff like that as well? There's, um, yes, there's a link, I believe, to my Twitter and my Instagram. And I want to say my Facebook, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. Okay. There are links on it. I can check. We'll make sure if it's not, we'll make sure, I'll make sure to get it in the video description so everybody has the links to get to, to find you in all the places, in all the lands. Yes, just don't find me at home. Or at home. that's my home. That's your home. I'm not Maybe cool I'm... with people just showing up in my home. <laughs> Stephanie Ann, hey. <laughs> How's hey, it going? come out, come out of my house. What, what are you doing here? I just bought your book. I saw that you know I saw the Unoweb interview show. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna have to have a talk with that guy. Um right. yeah, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram links are on my website as well. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much again, Stephanie. Appreciate You're very your time. welcome. No problem. Thanks again for doing this. This is awesome. My pleasure. I hope you have a wonderful night, okay? Thank you. Bye, Bye. everybody.